afternoon, folks. Welcome to my gameplay of Brandywine using GMT's Great Battles of the American Revolution. I'm going to jump into this. We're uh, at the top of turn five, is starting with the Americans. The Patriots go first. Uh, let's jump into the game. It's a really fun game. I really enjoyed myself, and hope you guys are too. So let's get into this. This is my first time going through a proper scenario. I've played a few practice games uh, in the past, but I never played a proper scenario. And that's what we're doing here. This is the first scenario uh, from the Battles book uh, from the Brandywine game. So, yeah, this is the situation. We're at the top of turn five. The Americans are the initiative player. They go first. And that'll be followed by the British. So what I will do is recap a little bit of the situation from the previous episode, which was turn four, I believe. I went through that. And there's the current army morale. You can see the Patriots are down to 15. And the British are at 18. And they're both considered to be in high morale. They'll have plus one their initiatives, which I applied in the last episode. Uh, for turn five's initiative. Patriots are first. And yeah, that's the situation. So the Americans are kind of teetering uh, regarding their army's morale. You can see over in the far left of the Patriot Force, Green's wing, which are the light blue stripe in the top of the blue counters, uh, his wing has come across the Brandywine Creek in force. And uh, after some severe reprimands, he's going to be pulling some of those troops back. I basically made a little error, not thinking, because originally what I intended to do is to have some of those troops support Sullivan. If you look over here, the dark blue stripes, this is Sullivan's wing. He's basically protecting and responsible for this part of the Brandywine's defense. Uh, keep the Brits from crossing. His forces are looking pretty thin at the moment. Uh, and that's because up here you can see a bunch of his troops under Sterling are heading to the Birmingham uh, Hill and Birmingham Meeting House, which is just up here in the corner. And he's going to be forming a defense up here in anticipation of Meeting House's arrival in turn 6 and 7. Remember, we're in the top of turn 5 currently. So that's the situation. Uh, Next up will be the Americans' movement, followed by their rally. They do have a couple units to rally, as you can see here. These are marked with disrupted markers. They will have a chance to rally from that and get back to parade order once again. There's a couple units in there uh, that need to rally. And in addition, what else? There's going to be some movement, of course, as I mentioned. Some of Green's troops will be pulling back a little bit. and I'm trying to shift over here and... Uh, reinforce this position, or at least set up a reserve where they can quickly react to anyone crossing here. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much what I'm going to attempt here, and go into the rally phase, and then it's going to be the defensive fire for the British. They will have the opportunity to fire, and so on and so forth. And of course, there's a combat up here to resolve. Uh, but we're not going to get to that just yet. I'm going to show you the results of movement and uh, rally attempts. If they were successful and of course one more look down here at the morale and also the momentum counters now remember there's five in the pool uh, for this scenario uh, and so far two are in play and they're controlled by the british these come about from uh, getting good results in fighting whether you're the defender or the attacker and the british currently have two momentum patriots have none and as you saw in the last episode they can be quite pivotal they can really uh, influence the outcome of a combat, among other things. So that's the situation. Now let's look at the reinforcements and what we can anticipate arriving in this direction. He is on his way. This is the objective. He wants to get in these positions, maybe get along this fence line. We'll see. Uh, one thing we got coming on this turn, uh, the Patriots do have some re reinforcements coming on the board, and they're the only side to have reinforcements this turn. Right here at point D, which is also where Howe's force will be arriving, right along this uh, road, which is the Forks Road. And arriving this turn for the Patriots is two small units of horse, or dragoons. Uh, they've basically been off to the north and spotting how's movements and so on and so forth. They'll be withdrawing, and I'm going to try and move them uh, to support Sterling, because one thing I want is to have lots of cavalry to watch my flanks and rear of Sterling's position. Uh, basically to counter any uh, breakthroughs by the British or if they try to sneak any troops from Howe's force uh, behind me and try and capture those objectives, if you remember. We got the town objective, and further down by that gray road, the pike is the road to Philadelphia. 
And the British need those. If they take them at the end of the Americans' turn, whatever turn it is, if they control those two points, they win automatically with a decisive British victory. And I assume that's what they're going for. Of course, playing the solo, I know what they're going for, and that is exactly it. So, folks, let's go into this. I'm going to go into the movement, do some force shifting in the case of green. And I'll do my rallies and show you the results of that. And then we'll get into the British defensive artillery fire, rifle fire, and close combats. Uh, as far as the rallies are concerned, they did manage to rally one of those units. Uh, you can see this unit is still rallied, and I believe that is uh, the light infantry that were part of Maxwell's force that was defending this location. Uh, you can also see Maxwell has returned to that location up on the high ground. Um, yeah, that was it for the rallies. That comes after movement. I don't know why I'm describing it now first. But as far as the movement is concerned, let's focus down here. I did actually uh, continue the attack. My uh, green, as you can see. Uh, he's joined the fray. He's with those red trousers, Pennsylvania Brigade, down here. That is pinned, which means it has to fight or move away. It didn't. It's going to fight. Uh, so he's joined that little combat. Uh, in addition, Maxwell has moved to this position here, back on the heights. He's joined by some riflemen, I believe. Let me see. There they are. Uh, right there, the Pennsylvania Rifle Regiment. And also some artillery. So he's back in this position again. And they had the initiative, so that's the advantage. Also, they're trying to repulse Ferguson's position. Ferguson is here, the British Rifles. He's, the Patriots have some more riflemen. And a strength three Virginia unit adjacent to him, as well as right here. We have another unit and another rifle unit, light infantry, strength one. So there's going to be some rifle fire here, and there's going to be some close combats, hopefully. Uh, rifle fire will be resolved first and simultaneous for both sides. And then it's going to go into the close combat. So whatever's left there is going to continue fighting. There's going to be lots of close combats this turn. And some of Green's force that he had back here, and a couple that were on the other side, uh, prematurely did actually move back along the road here, and they've since taken up positions. You can see there's a little bit more heft to the defense here, uh, at least near Sullivan's flank over here. There is one unit way over here. He did haul down that road. Uh, so it's slowly building up here, get some defenses going. So yeah, that's that. I'm not sure anything else happened. So, okay, let's take a look at Sterling and what he did. He got as far as this hex right here, which is some riflemen, strength one. Uh, they're in this position uh, behind those fences. There's some house, houses there. The Jones Farm, that's where he's located currently. That won't have any effect on any combats, but there they are. <clears throat> that's as far as they have got. Uh, the cavalry that were coming on as reinforcements did head down that road using strategic movement. Uh, they kept to that road, and they're, I think they're up in this position here, both of them, along with another unit, which was part of Sterling's force, some artillery. They're located there. And Sterling has just reached the Birmingham area. So he's about to climb the heights and set up a defense inside the meeting house itself. He's got a nice strength five unit there. Uh, he's got a strength six right here at the foot of these hills. They're going to be taking a position up here close to the building. Uh, yeah, these guys have better morale rating, I believe. They're a plus one, strength five. So I could fit another unit in there, a strength one unit, to help them. So boost it up to six strength to defend the meeting house. We're about to get into the Birmingham meeting house. And the rest of Sterling's force, you can see some artillery, more infantry is following up. So that's Sterling's position. Defensive artillery fire. Now, I think right here where I'm focused is pretty much where the only artillery fire is going to come. Got a battery here. It's out of range. Uh, these guns here are out of line of sight to the target. Other things. Uh, they really don't have anything to fire with, except over here. Right here, we got those two batteries. Could have Housen's uh, attack. A little bit slowed currently. Initiative has gone to the Americans. Uh, but he will be able to fire defensively on this position here where Maxwell has returned. So once again, another shot would be a total of strength three artillery uh, shooting up slope against troops behind breastworks. Not exactly the best ideal situation for the British. Uh, 
Let's see, I think this cannon could fire. Let me see. One, two, three. Uh, he's on the high ground here, and this position is also high ground. So I think I can shoot over these guys. Uh, Ferguson's rifles will be shooting. There'll be some rifle fire as well over there. And finally, we'll get into the close combats. But first, let me show you the results of the British artillery, defensive fire, and the simultaneous rifle fire among the participants. Did the artillery fire for the British defensive? Uh, again, it was just these two batteries here and this third battery. He's on a upslope, and so was the target. So these units would be ignored. You could see over top of them. Uh, so he did fire, and um, he combined fire, actually, with these two other batteries. They all fought at, shot at the same target, which was the rifle-armed troops back here. Uh, what they did manage to get is a step loss. So this unit, this Pennsylvania rifle unit, suffered a step loss. Uh, that was the only artillery fire that was going on. Went to the rifle fire at simultaneous. Lots of rifle fire going on. This unit, because it didn't leave the hex, remember, it was originally here during this part of the game. Uh, it also fired. It fired at one of these units advancing up the slope. Got a retreat result. There is that unit. So it withdrew from the attack. So the only thing in this hex at the moment is just this battery, Nifhausen himself. That's it. The only one left is this unit assaulting uh, Frazier's Highlanders. So that was that. That was the step loss they took, and they still managed to do some damage here and forced the 28th Regiment of Foot back one hex. Uh, other rifle fire was Ferguson's. He fired on Maxwell's position. This same target unit. Again, this is rifle fire. Uh, he was successful with that. He forced the Pennsylvania rifles to retreat. Uh, remember, this is all simultaneous. Uh, so he was retreating right when he did some damage to this guy, and he retreated. Uh, the results would be applied last. Uh, up here, these two rifle-armed units for the Patriots did combine to fire on Ferguson's. They had a strength of two uh, for their Got, shooting. Uh, Negative AM result, which means the British Army morale dropped one. one. We're going to go into the close combat part of the game. The turn, turn five for the Americans. And it's pretty much the assault here. Uh, his guns don't have to attack. Uh, but there will be a fight here. And that's going to be the Frazier's Highlanders making an attack up slope against Maxwell, Maxwell's position, which has nothing in it. So there really isn't going to be a fight here. I'll go into that, go into what happens here at the conclusion. Uh, there will be a fight here, because I think there's some non-rifle units. Yes, right there. They will have to fight. And there's one here. Strength 3 unit, plus 2 morale. The 10th Virginia. So there's going to be two Patriot units adjacent to Frazier's, or Ferguson's, rifles. There will be a combat there. Uh, Patriot's turn. They are going to attack. And the light units, can, the rifle-armed units, I should say, uh, optionally, can also join in this close combat. And of course, we have the pinned units, the British unit here, strength four, the King's Own, going against a total strength points of 12 from these two stacks, including Green himself participating. He's a nice plus one in the close combat for the Patriots, so maybe he can swing things in the favor of the Patriots this turn. So it's going to be pretty tough for this unit. It held out in the last fight. We'll see how good they do this time. So there is this to resolve and this attack on Ferguson. And I'll show you the results of that in a second. And I got the results all chosen up here. The, uh, up here, these two command, these two units, the stacks with green. The lead unit was this ninth Pennsylvania, a 4-4 four, four with a plus zero morale. Uh, that was the lead unit. They launched an attack on this unit here, and they got a retreat result. Uh, I think the combat... Modifiers were a net of minus one in total. Is uh, three to one in favor of the attacker, green in this case. And if you're curious, there was the tactics choices, which unfortunately, this one's the British, uh, unfortunately it netted a zero modifier. So yeah, tactics didn't play a role. Uh, green had a couple more options than the British did. There was no open flank in this case, so no diversions could be done. Uh, I did not. I also did not allow for the other two cards for tactics because of that. But that was just a random choice. And yeah, so he fell back one hex, and this unit, the lead unit, advanced forward. And I think I'm also going to follow that up with the other units that also participated. 
Uh, hmm. Yeah, I think we'll do that. We'll put them all in there. Well, let me see. I can't do him. That will be overstacking. But Green can join the attack, and he will do so as well with the advance. And that's the situation. So that's that combat. Next combat is going to be on Ferguson's position here against these two stacks. Rifle arm troops and, let's see, are they light infantry? No. It's going to be a considerable difference in strength, I believe. So let's resolve that. And it went favorable for the Americans. Uh, they got a... They reduced Ferguson's rifles. Basically, his counter was flipped to a slightly less effective side. So, yeah, they got a, a one result in the close combat. Uh, the Americans also took a penalty for having rifle-armed units. They are black. Uh, the black circle with a white R means they're uh, basically uh, not as effective in close combat. And suffered a penalty for that, but it was okay. Uh, tactics... Let's see, we had these two choices right here, which was ultimately, these are the British, this is Ferguson's unit, he decided to attack an echelon, and going against a skirmish unit right here, let's see, he's the defender, uh, against skirmish, that was a plus one to the combat roll, so it added a plus one to the combat roll, which benefits the Americans. Uh, total modifiers were plus three, minus three, I believe, yeah. On the 4-to-1 column, the attacker was larger in strength points. So, yeah, it was the 4-to-1 column. So, they got a pretty decent result. Forced a step loss. And looking at the morale, you will see it currently is at the following stage. Uh, the Americans went up one. So, good for them. And the British went down. should mention victory points have been uh, gained through all this combat and such. And it's currently the U.S. or the Patriots have one victory point, and the British are currently at six. So that's the situation. Well position. Uh, remember, the uh, Patriots are the attacking side in all combats during this step. Uh, they will have to attack with any of their combat units that are adjacent to enemy units or in the zone of control of them. And that's the situation here against Frasers and the artillery, as well as here, and Ferguson's. Uh, however, there's really no effective combat units here. You can't count the artillery, uh, so there is no attacker here. So there won't be a combat to resolve. And also, I should point out, I wasn't paying attention, but Maxwell had the option of retreating with that unit that fell back from that position to here, Pennsylvania Rifle Regiment. Uh, so I think I'm going to retreat with him, because otherwise he can be captured, as can the guns in the British turn. So he did retreat with that unit. So that's the case. That's the situation. Not very good results for the Patriots. Uh, this whole area, the only success they had really was with where Green was committed to the fight over here on the furthest end of the battle line against the British King Zone. They got a retreat result, forced them back, and were able to advance a hex. And that's about it. Uh, the result of this is I think the British are in a more stable defensive position. As you can see, they have this full line going on here. These units are supporting each other. So, yeah. So we're going to see what happens next. This will be the end of the Patriots' turn. We're going to go into the British uh, turn five. And, yeah, that's the situation, folks. What do you think? It's fun. Uh, yeah, this is the case. Well, at least the British are not near the... Proctor's battery position back there where Wayne is currently located, right here in this space. I haven't gotten any closer sure. up next in turn five. We're going to go over here to this turn track marker, flip this to the British side, and drop it to the second row here. So I hope you enjoyed, folks. This is the situation and the look of the battle. The Americans are still getting into position over in the north with Sterling. Uh, they've already arrived at the Birmingham area, and let's see, in turn five, no reinforcements for the British, but turn six is slowly creeping up. There will be some of Howe's initial forces arriving in the north very shortly, and we're going to get into that with the next episode here of this battle, and yeah, so far so good, loving the game. All right, folks, hang in there. Stay tuned for part eight. We're going to jump into the British players.
return. Like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. And as always, folks, hang in there. You know it. It's only going to get better. See you soon, folks. Take care.